What's going on Toy Fam? Project Piper Customs here and welcome back to the Custom Cave for part 3 of the ZD Toys Avengers Endgame Smart Hulk Custom. And in today's one, we're getting down to painting. Oh yes we are. Okay, so let's get to it. First of all, the plan is to do the arm first, body second, and the head last. And then of course I'm going to hit you at the end with the final reveal. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, seeing as there's a quite a few colour different variations within the texture of the arm, I'm going to have my reference material to obviously help me out. But at the end of the day, I won't know uh, exactly how I want this to look until I'm halfway through painting it. Okay, it's one of those things where you have a, a rough idea of how you want to start it, you have no idea how it's going to turn out, and you won't know then until you know exactly what you want until you, you're halfway through experimenting. There's going to be some trial and error in this. This whole point of customizing is to be trial and error. That's how you grow and that's how you build your skill set. Okay, so with that, I gathered up all the paints that I may or may not use throughout this paint job. Okay. I may not even use half of this or even two thirds of it, but I gathered them up anyway just in case I can have them on deck if I feel a bit flirtatious with some of the subtle detail. Okay, you just don't know. You know, you might have a little creative jump halfway through, and that's what happens even in toy photography. All right, so I've got them on deck just in case. And at the end of it, once we have got it to that point, because I will not stop until I get this the way I want, no matter how many times I get it wrong. Okay, you won't see that. You know, it will be edited down for you. Um, but I will go and list all the paints I used in the final paint job finish and I'll have them right at the end so you won't have to do all the experimenting like I am. Okay, I've also got a new set of paint brushes. Alright, so I'm not going to chew your ear off anymore. Let's just get to it. Okay, I have everything in front of me that I need to start with. Obviously, let me run through. I have paper towel, a uh, flat-ended uh, paint brush. You know, it would give a good even coat. Uh, a little pot of water right there and the arm of course and I have two reds now I'm going to start off with going in with a red okay as the base so all the melted skin areas right, are going to be covered in one red and I'm still yet deciding whether I'll go for a primary red or what's this one called a dark scarlet possibly lean towards the dark scarlet okay so the plan is to go over all the burns in the dark scarlet uh, I will then be going uh, and dry brushing uh, over just very very lightly over the raised areas with this tan okay and I'm just going to see how that looks because I'm just having a look at my reference material now and if I pop you up bear with me two seconds there you can see all right it's as bright as I can get it but as you can see here Obviously, there's a dark base right here, and then of course, all the raised areas have got sort of the flesh color. All right, so I'm going to see how it looks with the tan. Okay, and I may even add a hint of green. Okay, I'm going to lighten up the arm and the hand as well. Just a hint of green, obviously, it's this green Hulk skin that's burnt all over it. Um, and just going to see how that looks, possibly. And then what I want to do is, if I get carried away with any more details, well, I've got the paints for them. But then I'm going to give the whole thing a black wash, so that all the sculpt really just pops. You know, and of course, dirty up and black wash the hand. Really focus some heavy areas of black wash on some of these. Obviously, this is all shadow, but as you can see, there's some dark burnt areas where it's crispy. And yeah, I'm just going to see how that looks in the end. And uh, yeah, we're going to go from there. All right. So let me push it back down. There you are. So yeah, go and have the plan with the arm in front of you. So all of this will go in the red. And then all these raised areas, just going to very lightly have a light, light dry brush. And I'll go over what dry brushing is. Okay, there's a heavy dry brush and a light dry brush. And I think it's a wonderful painting technique. And this should just uh, capture the, the very um, surface. All the paint, it was a red paint, will sink right in. And then go over in the tan with just the surface lines. And then a bit heavier on the, uh, the patches. And we'll see how it looks compared to this. I might lighten this up with some lime green and might even add uh, an even lighter dry brush of the uh, the lime green and then with the black wash and then see how we come out the other end. All right, so let's get started. Okay, first we're gonna start off with the base layer of the dark scarlet and we're only gonna need a light layer so we'll get some excess off the brush and we apply this to the entire arm.
Okay, next we move on to the tan by Deco Art, and it's here where we start the dry brushing method. So you want to get a little bit on your paintbrush. And then using the paper towel, we want to wipe off all the excess until there's nothing left on the brush. Alright, as you can see, nothing much coming off. Now the technique here is you want to sweep across the arm or your subject like you're dusting for prints, okay? You want to go against the grain, the grain of the sculpt. As the sculpt is all flowing in one direction, you want to go against it so only the surface area gets hit with paint. And as you can see, that dark scarlet is just popping from underneath. Don't forget the hands. Second layer of dry brushing applied to really make that surface texture pop. Now moving on to our black wash, as you can see we've got a bit of black acrylic paint in a shot glass and we're just going to add some water. How thick or thin the black wash is depends on how much water you add, but we're going for a medium here. And then we begin to apply the first layer. Don't forget the hands. Okay, and now we're moving on to our Nargling Green by Citadel. And this is a lighter green. And we're just gonna go with a light dry brush over the surface texture again to see if we can blend it in with the skin tone. Experimenting with some colors. And it's at this point do I know that this is how I want the arm to look. And there we are, four black washes in and a light layer of the gnarling green all over. And this thing looks like it's just come straight out of an oven. And now we begin to blackwash the rest of the body.
Now with the upper torso, I wanted it to have the burns continue from the arm onto the jumpsuit. So with this side, I went with a neat black paint coat and then halfway across the jumpsuit, I used a dry brush to blend it in. Back with the Nardlin Green, just filling in these torn holes as if there's burnt holes in the jumpsuit. And now continuing with the Nardlin Green, we're just going to give the flesh tone a once over with a light dry brush to really tone it down. And now we move on to the head and using a can of matte varnish spray, we're going to really get rid of all of that glossy sheen and this will also act as a primer for when we paint. First things first is a black wash. And then back with the Nardling Green to give the whole head a light dry brush. We have reached the finish line of this three arc story and here we are all complete and ready to run into battle with Cap to kick the ass of him. Anyway, let's bring him up close so you can get a better look. All right, so there we are. There's the arm and the head and the whole body all re-sculpted and repainted. And uh, yeah, I'm extremely, extremely happy with how this one came out, especially as I was going in blind in terms of the texture for the burn and obviously the uh, the color format. I'll be writing a list in the comments of the paints that I used entirely for this. There was only like uh, three or four um, to, to create this uh, burnt look, especially for Hulk. Okay, I'm extremely happy with how the head sculpt came out. 
in terms of uh, the repaint because obviously as I said before head, uh, painting heads is one of my weak areas but um, so I was a bit nervous going in but I'm actually uh, extremely happy with how it turned out and uh, I feel confident that I'm getting better so uh, yeah it's all good and it's all learning and it all adds to your arsenal of skills okay so let's do a quick summary of everything that went down obviously in episode one you saw me prep the arm with the dremel and obviously chew around the sleeve and uh, yeah so that was all the prep work I then uh, in the second part obviously we did all the sculpting okay all the sculpting for the arm and obviously uh, snipped the uh, ball peg off and inserted the, the magnets okay so they can just pop straight on and uh, there you go easy interchangeable hands that's what I like and these came out really really nice all right and then yeah part three was obviously the painting started with the arm and then the torso and then the head okay so as you can see i've got a massive black wash here um for where the burn has uh you know protrude all across and sort of just contained in this area and then of course it's also uh, just gone up his neck slightly and onto his face i really enjoyed doing that part on the head painting and this was the green of choice the nargling green this is what makes the whole thing pop you know i went for that lighter shade of green as he is in the movie, obviously when he's uh, become Smart Hulk and morphed into Banner, it's kind of desized him and also added a bit of different colour to him, you know, lightened up that complexion. So yeah, I wanted to try and capture that, recap the, fe uh, the feet a little bit dirty, obviously to mimic him, you know, trudging through debris and mud and what have you. Just wanted to go over a couple of things that I did uh, post, you know, post shooting, basically not on camera. And um, one of them obviously is, if I bring the head sculpt up, is uh, obviously his grey, his grey shades that are coming in on his hair. All right, and uh, I used a dry brush method as uh, is the favourite, and I just used some of this, which is a, an ivory. It's an ivory colour, so I'll let you get a look at that label. All right, and just yeah, very light dry brush, just on the sides, and had it sweeping around the back of his ear. All right, the colour for the lips, as you can see. All right, let's get a bit of light on here. There you go. So, there you go. So, the colour for the lips was literally just a combination of Nargling Green and the Dark Scarlet. Okay, and I'll show you my little painting pad. And as you can see, just mix the two right there, and that created a nice little greenish uh, flesh colour to, to have on his bottom lip. And uh, what else is there? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, yes, I went in with his eyes. And I gave his eyes some uh, a little bit of a gloss coat, and this is a liquid gloss from Humble. It needs a good shake, okay? In order to get it non-tacky, you need to shake the hell out of it. And see if I can capture it in his eyes. But uh, yeah, can you see that slight glare? It's a bit hard to focus now. There you go, there you can see there's a slight glare on his eyes. All right, yeah, and that's literally just a tiny little paintbrush and just went in a little thin coat across the eyes to give it that sort of moist, wet look. Okay, add a bit of realism to it. All right, and then afterwards, after all of that, actually I did this before I put the gloss on, but before then I gave the entire figure a complete once over with the matte varnish, just to eliminate the last of the, uh, the uh, sheen from the plastic and to really give it that dusty battle ready for war look you know so yeah and it uh, it came out beautifully so there you have it guys and this is how you turn a mediocre figure into a piece of art that's worthy of being on your collection all right there you go and yeah extremely happy with this as a collector's display piece you know the articulation was already limited, so eliminating it even more was no big issue for me. I'm only going to be using this for a couple of shots in terms of toy photography. This is mainly for display, so the whole point was just to get the look, and I feel like I've achieved that, and I hope you guys do too as well. All right, and that is it, and I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who stuck with me on the journey of these uh, three-part series. All right, you've all been fantastic with the support in the comments and social media. So guys, if you have any questions at all regarding the build at any stage whatsoever, if you want some more insight, if you don't, if you feel like I didn't go over enough, 
or provide enough explanation and you just want a bit more insight into it then definitely hit me up in the comments or slide into my dms on my social media which is at project piper customs on instagram and facebook and i will be happy to answer any questions and uh, yeah shed some more light into any area that you uh, you want to improve on uh, absolutely and yep that's it from me guys thank you again can't wait to get started on this purple bastard <laughs> he's the next one he doesn't need much doing i'm just going to give the figure in complete repaint you know uh, tone down that uh, uh, the purple a little bit as it's quite bright and uh, go over the gold and uh, batter him up and weather him up a bit all right so that'll be a fairly straightforward one that will just be a one piece one off video and uh, and yeah and then we wait until we get the uh, the iron patriot and the iron man from the next uh, end game wave TikTok has bro i'm still waiting <laughs> anyway that is it thanks again everyone and until next time.